Good day and welcome to STO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, some elected members of the United States Congress have put forward legislation that was to impose sanctions on the exports of Russian helium. So in this video I want to discuss what it means, how they intend it will work and is it likely to be another overreaching failure by the neocons and Russia-phobic politicians in Washington who are getting to resemble Don Quixote tilting at windmills every day with the EU as their faithful Sancho Panza. So please stay with me as I explain and go through the major points and predict what's likely to happen uh, and the outcome of this conflict. Now, it appears the initial objective is to prevent Russia from becoming one of the world's largest uh, and top three producers of helium. Now, They've actually noticed that Russia is actively increasing production of this strategic resource, which is vitally important for the world's high-tech industry sector. According to forecasts, Russia has the capability to take up over half the world market by 2030. And as usual, the US feels that it's the major power in the world and it gets to decide on who does what and where in the world and it's decided that it wants to stop Russia's move to develop its helium production. Now, according to US politicians, it's imperative that we impose limitations on Russia. What they don't spell out is why, apart from the fact that they don't want Russia to be a major producer, I mean, if it's not as if helium's a nuclear material for bombs that, or Russian helium production would destroy all life in the USA as a serious threat. Now, the letter regarding the latest sanctions was signed by Democratic Sen Senators Robert Casey and the stroke victim John Fetterman of Pennsylvania, as well as several other members of the House of Representatives. Now, the letter was addressed to Secretary of State and Anthony Blinken, Treasury and Commerce Secretaries Janet Yellen and Gio Raimondo. Now, are there three more useless idiots in position of power anywhere else in the world? I mean, Blinken is not taken seriously by the Russians, the Chinese, or even the Saudis who treat him like a message boy. Yellen is widely mocked for a pronouncement that US is rampant and prolonged inflation, unaffordably crisis, was only transitory, and yet it's have gone on for the whole time of Biden's occupancy. Uh, of the White House and Ria Mondo's role as Commerce Secretary has been dogged by mistakes and gas, plus accusations that she's in the pocket of big tech, which contributes huge amounts to the Democrats' election funds. Now, according to her, in a few years, Russia's share of global helium production crew could grow from 2% to 30%, according to her, quotes by Political magazine. Moscow will likely gain a foothold in the global market if we and our allies do not intervene and stop them, she said. What they mean by intervene is not actually mentioned, but if it's imposing sanctions, then they're wasting their time. As the major buyers of helium currently are the Chinese, the Indians and the Vietnamese, and they're all currently trading with Russia. Now, obviously, the US doesn't like the idea or the fact that other countries have a control over vital resources that are beyond their ability uh, to manipulate and control, and they don't like it. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. This can be done by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen on the right hand side. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now, according to the US Geological Survey, 170 million cubic metres of helium were produced in 2023 and that's an 8% increase over 2022. Now, the US is the largest supplier with 46%, which is 79 million cubic metres, while Qatar and Algeria are in second and third place with 66 and then down to 10 cubic metres, million cubic metres, respectively. Russia's currently in fourth place with an estimated 8 billion. However, the rate of Russia's development is unparalleled. In the global market, Russia and Qatar have accounted for over 80% of the growth over the last year, with a combined total of over 10 million cubic metres. It's worth noting that approximately one third of the world's 
helium supply originated from an underground reservoir in Texas. Now, this reservoir was created as a strategic resource for inflating airships back in the 1920s. Now, some of you might find it as an interesting fact that the Hindenburg airship was filled with hydrogen and not helium due to US sanctions against Germany and the export of helium. The Hindenburg disaster wouldn't have happened if it had been filled with helium, which is not flammable. So amazingly, over a hundred years ago, the US was using sanctions on other countries and on products like helium. And it seems the bar stewards continue to use sanctions, despite obvious they only work on small countries that can be bullied and not fight back. In the back of the 90s, there was a decline in the use of helium, but since then it's been followed by a period of rapid growth because of the development of technology. Now, helium as a gas is now widely used in the high tech sector where it's utilized in the production of LCD displays, uh, optical fibers, superconductors, medical equipment and breathing mixtures. Moreover, Helium is employed in the high-tech industry for components for mobile phones, tablets and space technology. Now, helium is an inert gas, meaning it doesn't react with other substances, which makes it crucial for as a quality for manufacturers of electronic components, as it prevents other gases or contaminants from entering the microchip. Helium is also highly efficient at absorbing heat, making it an ideal choice for cooling applications. Now, due to its capacity to cool to a level of a, a level of superconductor, it's utilised in MRI scanners, according to Pavel Zevotstanyov, who's associate professor at political analysis at the Russian Economic University. He says Russia has significant potential for growing its helium production. I mean, the Trofanuk Institute of Oil and Gas uh, Geology and Geophysics at the Russian Academy of Sciences forecast that Russia's production could reach 75 million cubic metres by 2030. Now, that's a realistic projection as the two leading enterprises in Russia are the Orenburg Healing Plant in the south of Russia in the Urals district and the Amur Gas Processing Plant in the Russia's Far East. In 2022, Gazprom increased the corresponding capacities by eight times. Now, two of the three units of the Amur gas processing plant, one of the company's most significant projects in the Far East, have been launched and are now fully operational. Also, the gas processing plant has a comprehensive production and sales infrastructure in place, and that encompasses production, processing, liquefaction, and transportation to domestic and international markets. Obviously, being in Russia's Far East region, it's in very close competency to the Chinese and the rest of the Asian market. Now, in 2022, the Irkutsk Oil Company initiated the operation of a pilot helium plant at the Yakhansloy uh, oil and gas condensate field. Now, this enterprise has the capacity to reach 7.5 million cubic metres per year. Now, its location in Irkutsk is also ideal for deliveries to both the European and Far Eastern markets due to its position on the Northern Sea Route. Now, the West's aggressive policy towards the Russian oil and gas sector uh, has also provided impetus for further production and exports. I mean, due to sanctions, some of the LNG plants will likely be re-equipped to process second-order raw materials, including helium and other speciality gases, according to Pavel Marishev, who's a member of the Council at the Russian Gas Society. He says, Russia's resource base will allow it to maintain its leading positions, plus its effective technology allows it to develop its industry independently of foreign know-how, technology and equipment. Now, Moscow's ambitious plans are cause for concern for the current market leaders. I mean, the EU is also uh, looking to impose sanctions. Concern that helium may be another instrument of its geopolitical influence compared to its oil and gas. Now, the US is also a matter of intensifying competition because the US has historically been the largest producer of helium. But now it's more dependent on imports, while Russia is increasing its capacity with the projects like the Amur gas processing plant in Orenburg, according to Vitaly Kvitsov, who's the CEO of the AON Centre, 
and the implementation of national port projects in Russia. Now, in the 1990s, there was a decline in demand for helium. But because of technological uh, advancement, helium is now crucial. And, I mean, everybody needs it for optical fibre, semiconductors, and uh, medical equipment. Also, helium is used in the nuclear and space industries, plus medicine, production of parts for mobile phones and tablets. So the potential for growth is endless. So it's important that Washington wants to limit Russia's share of the market, according to Ivan Andreevsky, who's a president at the Russian Union of Engineers. So there are promising prospects for the creation of a Russian and BRICS Interstate Raw Materials Alliance and that was being suggested by Vladimir Putin uh, in a meeting in September. And the Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin has been asked with spearheading this initiative to make sure that the, the BRICS have the right resources and if Russia can contribute. Now, the analyst uh, and economist Alexander Mishinov is confident that the BRICS countries' partnership will make sure that Russia is the main supplier for the growing markets of India and China. And by assuming the lead role, Russia will reinforce its economic ties with the Asia-Pacific region and China, which are home to the world's significant industrial production potential and the world's major electronics manufacturers. Furthermore, Western sanctions are likely to have a major impact. I mean, according to analysts at iTech, uh, global demand for helium will double by 2025, reaching 322 uh, million cubic metres. And first and foremost, that's due to electronics. Also in the iTech DEX report, global supply needs to expand with Russia and Qatar playing the pivotal role with the US just being an also round. So I expect more rhetoric and hot air from US politicians, most of whom can't tell you exactly why they hate Russia, but they know they need an enemy to keep the money flowing into their campaign coffers from the military industrial complex, which would like Russia to call, would likely collapse without an enemy like Russia. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button. Don't forget the comments. Please keep them coming. I love answering your comments, reading your comments and responding. So please keep them coming. Thank you and see you again soon.